Welcome to a new episode of the Tiny Apartment series. Today we're gonna build a bed from the wall sofa bed system. Let's get started. So before we get started on the build, I'm presenting the plan I made for this space. As you can see the room is all but square, which will bring more challenges as I want the furniture to adapt to the angles. I've already built the kitchen and if you haven't seen that, make sure to check out episode 4. Now you can have an idea of what's coming, even if the pieces of furniture are represented pretty much by basic shapes and volumes. Let's start to fill up this wall by constructing the wall bed that flips over the sofa. I chose birch plywood to build most of the furniture as it is pretty durable and high quality. Also for such a small space, I thought that a light colored wood would be a better pick as darker colors tend to make spaces feel smaller than what they are. So right at the plywood dealer, I identified each section after making some cuts in order to fit in the car. Each color corresponds to a different project and yellow belongs to the bed. I labeled all the parts needed for this project according to the Rockler Murphy bed instruction book that came with the hardware kit that I used. I will have the building plans available for the sofa in the next episode, but not for the wall bed. Obviously it wouldn't make sense to repeat Rockler's plans, so I'll post a link to the hardware kit in the description that includes all the info and explanation videos that I also followed. I cut a bunch of plywood to size, although I had to make a few modifications to adapt to the queen-sized mattress that I'll be getting, since mattresses dimensions vary quite a lot depending on the world's location. I also spent some time rewriting all the dimensions from the plans in centimeters to minimize the error, as I still get confused when using the imperial system, and my rollers and most tape measures are metric anyway. To connect the frame pieces, I used screws, but instead of having the heads showing up, I decided to make colorful plugs out of dyed maple that you'll see me using in a bit. I first made the holes to match the size of the plugs and then drilled a pilot hole for the screws. I basically grabbed the opportunity to create visual colorful details without compromising the minimal look of the piece and I think it gave it a really nice twist to the original plan. After confirming the dimensions of the mattress box, I kept following the Murphy bed plans and drilling holes to attach the hardware components. This is a fairly simple system that consists in a pivot point and a piston lift mechanism. To build the inner wood bed frame, it is recommended to use solid wood, so I reclaimed some long pieces of pine that used to belong to my first studio bed that I built back in 2012. I mentioned it on the loft bed video, so if you're interested, go take a look and learn how to build a loft bed too. To continue working on the structure to place below the mattress, I had to cut strips from larger boards and had a hard time doing it because the wood had a lot of tension which made it close the curve just right after passing the table saw blade. I managed that by placing a wedge on the end of the cut to force the curve to be open. Even though I could finish the cuts, the wood came out rather warped and try to balance the curvatures when connecting the strips together perpendicularly. It's time to sand the plywood rails because it's easier to do it now before attaching everything together. To make sure I got everything square and aligned, I used these Rockler corner clamping jigs that I find extremely useful. It's very difficult for me to secure two pieces tightly together and perpendicular when screwing and these are perfect. Rockler has been one of the greatest supporters of this channel and the maker community in general and I'm always happy to use their products on the videos. 
They always have the right tool and accessory for the job to help us develop our woodworking projects more efficiently. So thanks Rockler for sponsoring this video. The inner section is now being assembled, making sure the heads of the screws are flush or below the surface. The two parts can now be attached with lots of screws. Perfect! Woo. Let's screw that in! Next step is to attach the main plywood panels and since they are going to be visible all the time, I made sure to choose the best faces and combine the grain the best way possible. As this came from different boards, the wood grain doesn't match perfectly, but I found that placing a different strip of material over the seam disguises the fact that they don't match perfectly. I will again make a colorful detail out of this. The bed frame needs to be attached to these boards with a quarter inch edge clearance on three sides to reduce the gaps in from the front when the bed is up on the wall. I can now continue working on the bed verticals and find the correct size bits for each hole detailed in the instructions. These are the stoppers to prevent a panel with the mattress from going too deep into the verticals. I used masking tape to have a visual reference regarding the depth of each hole. This is one of the plates that will receive the piston to assist raising and lowering the bed. Here I was making rainbow plywood to use as the middle strip on the front panels. These are real wood sheets that have been dyed in bright pigment and typically you can find them on skateboards. Pretty cool, right? By the way, check out my friend Ben from Wobby Design channel that makes all kinds of amazing colorful projects using old broken skateboards. For the plugs, I made a thinner glue up for each separate color. I hand plane one long edge and cross cut the ends on the miter saw so I have straight and square references to pass through the table saw. If you don't have a zero clearance insert, you might want to stop the cut a few centimeters from the end and flip over to continue the cut, otherwise this could scare you. Here I'm using a plug cutter to create a little colored dots and as they come out slightly tapered, only then I realized I should be drilling them the opposite way. Now comes the silly part that I regret to have made with the track saw. I should have used the router with a straight edge, but for some reason in my head at the time I thought it was going to be quicker to do with the track saw in multiple passes. The idea wasn't that bad, but it turned out that the depth wasn't correct and had to remove quite a lot of shavings by hand with a small shoulder plane. That was very tedious, which is pretty clear by my reactions. Oh, Jesus Christ.
I could finally glue the rainbow strip in place along with the tiny piece that I cut at a 45 degree angle to match the thickness of the main panels. I used the CA and wood glue method by alternating them every 10 centimeters or so. This allows for a quick setup without clamps as the CA glue will bond instantly and serve as a clamp while the wood glue dries that provides more strength. The plugs were pressed into the holes without glue because I wasn't sure if the frame would need to be disassembled for some reason and would be much easier to pop them out if they were not glued up. It should be fine anyway, these won't be falling off because they were super tight. Instead of applying a metal handle, I wanted to make a recess and play a little bit with the rainbow plywood again. So I made this template and used the router with a flush trimming bit to copy the shape into the plywood panel after removing the bulk with the drill bit and the jigsaw. The camera battery died here so I didn't record the jigsaw part but you get the point. Now it's a matter of sticking the template with double sided tape to the workpiece and route it. I also made a tiny round over to make it smoother for the hand to grab. Since I just exposed the hole into the bed frame structure, I decided to make a shallow box with a matching rainbow panel as a background that will work as a recess for the handle. After some hours of sanding and refining the edges, I could apply four coats of water-based varnish to all the parts. Once it was dry, I put the metal hardware from the Murphy bed kit in place and attached the rainbow box behind a handle cutout. Now comes an important part. Because I want the bed to flip over the sofa cushions, it needs to be raised a certain amount in order to fit. This is why I discarded the provided metal legs that came with the Murphy bed kit. In my case, I needed to make this small platform for the bed to sit over. When the bed is lowered, it will sit over the sofa and over the upcoming coffee table, so I don't need extra legs and also they wouldn't be the correct size for this purpose anyway. So if you're just building a regular Murphy bed, ignore this step and attach the metal legs. As I had an electrical socket on this wall area that I want to use later, I extended the wires and put a cover. This other hole doesn't have anything on it, but I covered it as well. None of these will be visible anyway. The main component weighs tons and was a bit hard to handle around, but I wanted to prepare everything the best I could before my helpers came to bring it all up on the wall. I can now attach the outer structure together 
and didn't plug these screws because they won't be visible. It's time to attach the headboard and uh, whoops, I was going to attach it with a finished face facing the wall. There you go. We started to lift it up and something wasn't quite right, so I had to disassemble a few parts and file the pivot hole a little bit on one side in order to correct the misalignment. Now with the bed up, I snapped the gas springs in place from behind and reattached the stoppers. Front. The bed can now be anchored to the wall with four screws and it's ready to be opened. It was extremely hard to open without the mattress in, but that is completely normal. It's the extra weight that makes it open and close very easily. And speaking of mattress, I'd like to thank Colonex for providing me with this amazing mattress. I've always neglected the quality of sleeping products in the past and now that I'm not so young anymore and feel tired and pain every day, I started to look after better solutions. And that's when I found Colonex, a Portuguese company that uses premium quality materials and technologies on their products. This Revolution mattress is made in a single piece of channel lock foam that is very supportive on the body. This is the only technology produced with water-based catalysts being innovative and ecological. It ensures that the body weight is evenly distributed and doesn't become deformed over the years. It also eliminates the impact and vibration when the person next to you is moving. All the materials used are hypoallergic and the removable and washable bamboo cover combined with the semispheres allow air to circulate, creating an environment free of dust mites, allergies, heat and perspiration. They have lots of different products to choose from, so make sure to visit the link in the description to know more. I'm truly impressed by my new mattress and pillows, and I still can't believe how quickly I've been falling asleep during the past month and not experiencing micro-awakenings during the night that used to be a huge problem. Thanks everyone for watching, and I hope you got some good ideas for your next project. A big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and if you want to support my work too, visit patreon.com slash gethandsdirty and my online shop where you can get some cool t-shirts, sweatshirts, handmade notebooks, stickers and more. Hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram to see what I'm working on next and go get your hands dirty!